Hello everyone, welcome to this really weird channel. I'm here today because I recently applied to Central St. Martin's um, at the University of the Arts London and I got accepted. And during my um, application process, I would constantly Google uh, portfolio examples and the only thing that I found was portfolios for American universities, not for British ones. And the briefs for portfolios in the US and the UK are completely different. It was really hard for me because I was super stuck and I didn't know how to make my portfolio and I didn't know what to include, how to present it. I kind of did that, you know, I had to discover that by myself and I just thought that now that I did get accepted, I can help people who are in the same situation as I was and hopefully we'll give you some kind of guidance. So let's start. The admissions process consists of two phases. Um, so the first one is you send your personal statement and then after like a week they get in contact with you asking for your digital portfolio. From then on, if they like you, they select a small group of people to do the face-to-face -face interview. And then from then, you, you get to know if you've been accepted or not. For some reason, I was not called for the face-to-face -face interview. I was just accepted directly after I um, submitted my digital portfolio. So I don't know why, but I'm taking that as a good thing. A portfolio doesn't necessarily have a structure and you know it's it's a reflection of who you are as an artist so you don't necessarily need to do it in the same way that I did um, I'm just really here to give you kind of like you know a backbone and some help if you're stuck my theory when I made my portfolio was to put my best pieces in the beginning and also end my portfolio with my, with my best pieces just because I know um, of a psychological theory that says that people tend to forget what's in the middle. So if you see like a supermarket list, you'll remember what's in the beginning and what's in the end, but the middle will get jumbled up. So yeah, I started off with my favorite piece that I've ever made, which was my year 13 coursework piece in which I focused on my home and my hometown. What symbolizes home to me um, is my grandparents and also this tree that only grows in Brazil and also grows in my grandparents' front yard. If you look into their hair, you can see that I've written a few things and you're probably wondering, why did you write something in their hair? Well, let me tell you, I got their old love letters that they sent each other when they were 18 and I wrote phrases of those letters in their hair to kind of create the tone, like kind of create the different um, darker hairs. Instead of just painting it, you know, I made it kind of more exciting, I think. I kind of told their love story quite subtly um, within the piece, which I think is really cool. This piece was made using oil paints for their face and their hair and their hands. Um, and the clothes are made with acrylic paint and the roots are made with paper mache and this glue that I made using wallpaper sticky glue um, which is really good I do recommend it and then on the sides of this was my first page of my portfolio on the sides I kind of show some experimentation I investigated what would be the best um, type of media to use what what which route would look better um, things like that process to your final piece is really important of course you don't want to include everything um, but just the main things that led you to creating that final piece in the way that it was. The next page is still of the same project, but just, again, experimentation. So um, on the right, you'll see where I tested out how they would look like using oils. And I found out that that was a success. So that's why I decided to do that in my final piece. And then the bottom left, you'll see my first um, experimentation with their letters. And then on the top, I use just the phrases to create their faces and so on and then i go on to kind of relating um the intertwining of roots and relating that to an embrace just kind of i have to have an explanation behind everything the next thing that i included in my portfolio is my final year 13 
piece this is my exam piece and it's based on something really weird you're probably thinking what the hell is this well the key term for this project was freedom and limitations and you could create anything based off of, off of that um, I chose to look into the um, freedom that we have with um, you know the exploration of science I chose to look at um, genetic engineering and kind of how you know the limits of that and also the freedom that we have with that you know how much freedom do we have when it comes to manipulating nature um, and so I started reading articles about the fact that we can now choose the sex of the baby when we cho when someone chooses to do IVF um, and then I read more articles saying that in the future we'll eventually be able to choose even like musical ability, um, sports ability, like loads of crazy things, eye color. And I started thinking about, you know, like if you go against nature and you manipulate it, surely, you know, it's going to fight back. So that was kind of what the project was, you know, people trying to get these perfect babies, but in reality, you know, you can't get something perfect because nature is imperfect so yeah i kind of looked at that and it's like babies um they kind of went wrong in this you know experimentation of um of genes and manipulation of all those things um, it is very controversial i did have to be very careful when when making this project because it could be potentially very offensive and that's why i chose to kind of make the babies in a more cartoon-like way, not necessarily so realistic as I did with my first um, project that I showed. I made them kind of really creepy by putting them in these jars. Um, they were made on uh, acetate paper with oil paints because oil doesn't react with water, so I knew that I would be able to put them in this liquid without the painting actually being damaged. And this liquid is the same um, glue that I used for my first piece where I told you that I made it with um, wallpaper glue and it's the same it's the same liquid because it's very transparent and very sticky and resembles formaldehyde which is the liquid that preserves dead bodies so yeah very uplifting optimistic the bottom left is kind of like the final pieces of my sketchbook looking at experimentation testing out the liquid testing out the different colors because the liquid in itself is transparent and so i had to put um, food coloring into it and i was just testing you know that out second page of that project just shows me experimenting with media and you know what kind of media would be used to make the actual babies because I, I didn't know what my final piece would be um, so that's kind of an exploration and with this project I um, started off by showing you know the normal development of a baby inside the womb and that's why you can see a normal baby um, on the top left and that's um, a drawing that I made from an ultrasound scan and eventually they get more gruesome as the project went along. This is my third project. As you can see, they're all fine art projects, so I kind of grouped, you know, fine art projects together um, and so on. Um, this was my year 10 final piece, and it just I just talked about kind of um, the camera died, and I had to wait like an hour for it to charge up again. So, where did I end? Okay, so um, this piece is talking about about the development of Dubai as a city and how it just never stops building and constructing new skyscrapers and um, the key word for this project was reflections and so I chose to look at kitchen items and metals that reflect and I chose this little bell and this was done using inks and the bell was made using inks and the um, bottom of it was made using um, coffee where I tried to kind of um, resemble the desert and the bell reflects Dubai from far away and you know shows how much it has grown over time 
On the right, you can see my little experimentation work. Um, they are both A4. The top is oil pastels and the bottom is ink. But yeah, what I really liked about this project and why I included it in my portfolio, even though it's quite an old piece, is that it really shows, um, you know, me trying out different media. So, you know, in this piece alone, we have inks, we have coffee, we have acrylic, you know, and my sketchbook for this, for this project, you know, I used a variety of different medias. So everything from um, ink and bleach, um, you know, I used the different types of printing. So Tiger Balm printing and mono printing. And this is actually on the next page where you can see these studies of development work um, where I was looking at different objects and I really love this piece on um, the right which I really captured I think reflection really well using bleach. Um, so yeah, I just included it you know, to show a variety of different media. Um, the next thing that I included is my final year 11 piece in which I made solely using um, a ballpoint pen. Uh, this piece was huge, it was way bigger than A1, it was A0 size, um, and I just looked at people who, you know, suffered a lot with fame and throughout my project I looked at their, um, you know, how they progressively got worse through the years. Um, and yes, I really really love this piece. It was, um, I actually talk about this piece in my portfolio because it really helped me um, find my own style and I think if you have a piece like that that you you know kind of discovered yourself with definitely do put that in your portfolio then I just continue on to you know similar pieces um, this is actually commissioned work that I did using the same style this is one of my very first pieces actually that I made and it was just talking about you know, how the fast food industry is really bad for us. I really liked it. I really loved um, the different types of media that I'm using here. The whole burger is made with um, watercolor and the top of the burger is made using stucco, which is a really cool type of material. It's like a construction material, um, which I also used in the very first piece that I showed um, for the roots um, on the actual canvas. For my grandparents' piece. I think stucco is a really cool way of adding texture and it's also 3D so it comes out of the canvas which I think is really really cool. This next page I'm showing more, I start going into digital work. Um, it's really important to have a page um, of your portfolio kind of showing observational drawings. Um, that is definitely something to put in and I did these really quickly just on my iPad um, and here in Dubai, I cannot, I don't have the opportunity to draw a real life, you know, nude model. But for places, you know, other countries that you do have that opportunity, then do do that because, you know, they don't want um, drawings from a picture, they do want to see real life observational drawings. On Vimeo, you can find this channel called Croaky Cafe, and they have loads of nude models for you to draw them. So, yeah, I think it's a really cool resource for artists. I did this digitally, but I also did these little drawings um, using watercolor pens, which I think were really cool. I did these really, really fast, but I just did these um, in order to kind of um, show my skills when painting something in a limited amount of time. So I gave myself like, um, I think it was 10 seconds, 30 seconds, uh, a minute, and so on. I think I'll put them here, but if I don't, then this is it in my mini little sketchbook. I think that, you know, in terms of making mistakes, it's so easy to erase them and just, you know, completely erase the fact that you did make a mistake. Whereas with real, with real watercolor pens and pencils and pens, if you make a mistake, then you just kind of have to adapt, you know, the drawing to that. And I think that's really cool. So these were done really freely. I really, really like these women and also curvier people are really I find it a lot more fun to draw um, see like they're really cool I love them um, and then these are my favorite because I not only used the watercolor pens but I also used um, fine liners afterwards 
so yeah they're so cute i love them so yeah i really recommend uh, for you to do that do 100% have observational drawings within your portfolio because that is a must that they do want to see there I just chose to do um, figures just because I find that more interesting now I go on to um, some architecture work that I did in my first year of architecture because I quit um, architecture uni this was a museum that I created and you can see the models um, and as well as the 3D floor plans and elevations that I made um, in order to explain my model. Um, so here I just put that in because I want to show that I do know how to use different types of you know, computer software and my skills in those softwares. And then on this next one, again, the same thing, using computer software, but then showing that I do understand different types of color and color schemes. Um, which I thought you know would be good here all these architecture things are kind of showing my creativity and you know how I am able to create 3d models and not just do things on a canvas so now I move on to something that I talked about in my port in my personal statement this is part of my graphic design course that I did the short course that I did during my gap year this was actually part of a project that I did where I started my own um, planner and journal store and this was kind of like the visuals behind the store um, so my logo that I created the supporting graphics um, a little bit about brand and you know how it would look and in my personal statement I kind of said how I do aim to you know continue that further and think to link something in your personal statement to your portfolio is also really really cool again it's the same project but just uh, posters that I made for the opening of the store and this is um, commissioned work that I created for um, this jewelry brand I did the new collection banner and also a few illustrations for them to post. This was also commissioned work and this was a party invite that I created. Also always showing the details as you can see the little hair on the stem of the flower. And I finish off my portfolio with a little bit of portraiture, digital portraiture and I ended with this one because in my personal statement I talk about how um, I found my style through the use of explosive lines and, you know, being messy and, you know, first I showed where I found that inspiration from, which was um, my Destroyed by Fame project, and then I show it at the end and show how I continued um, taking that element through my art up until now. I completely forgot about my photography page where I went out and photographed a few locals from the Spice Market and Gold Market um, and I just added these pictures because I just wanted to add a little bit of more variety um, apart from the whole digital work and fine art and I love the colors of these photographs and what they represent. I hope it helped. Um, I'll put the link in the description um, to the page on the UAL website which mentions uh, the portfolio briefs also for you guys to have um, a better understanding of what to put in your portfolio. If you guys have any questions then let me know and message me and I'll be happy to answer them um, and yeah good luck everyone and bye guys!